Back in episode 8, I constructed my first nether module for the custom LEGO Minecraft series. This one's a pretty special build featuring a number of obviously very unique mobs, but also some functions including a light up lava pool and functional nether portal. I think we're well overdue for a return to this dimension, and based off your input, the place we should go is the Warped Forest. I want to make this module something special because the Warped Forest has got to be my favorite nether biome too. So what are we waiting for? Let's build this thing. For this one, we're gonna start out with an eight x eight block module or 16 by 16 studs. And I know what you're thinking. Seriously, 16 by 16 studs? We haven't done something this small since the first episode. And now we're going back to small modules, but I promise you, this one's actually going to be at least as tall as the ice spikes. I want to continue that functionality aspect that I brought into the first nether module, so of course light up lava here is a must. I'm going to be using the same exact lighting and the same exact technique I used on the other nether waste module, painstakingly weaving these fairy lights through a series of one by one round plates underneath eventually some transparent stuff so the lights will go through. This process is tedious for sure, but I think the results are very much worthwhile. I appreciate the thin wires here that come with the, some of these third party lights. It's pretty easy to sneak these wires in between bricks, which is fantastic. And a huge plus to finding lighting outside of Lego means that it's much more affordable. I'm gonna top these off with a variety of one by two tiles, some of them transparent, and I'll try to line those up with the LEDs themselves so we get as much light coming through as possible. The rest of the space I'm gonna just fill up with orange. So we get a little bit of texture here too. It's not just a completely flat orange surface. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed with the brightness of these things. My workspace is plenty bright, but you can still see the light shining through here, which is great. It's exactly if the effect I want. This will look great at conventions, and hopefully for the duration of this video as well. I'll quickly fill in any remaining gaps with one by one tiles, and then the lava portion of this build is done. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the nether waste module right away. It's the only module, of course, that it connects to, and it's gonna help me make sure things line up perfectly. I'm gonna be adding magma blocks right up here against the lava where it usually generates. I forgot to add this all together in the nether waste module, so that's better late than never, right? The blocks themselves are made up of a pretty random arrangement of dark orange, regular orange, dark red, transparent neon orange, and just regular transparent orange to create that noisy texture that you find in a game. Like the nether waste module, I want to leave plenty of room for the battery box so it's easy to turn on or switch out the batteries if necessary. Another thing I'm remembering to add early on are some ores. We've got some quartz ore down here, and hopefully later on we'll add some gold ore to the terrain as well. And a new biome means a new grass color, and that is going to be turquoise for the warped forest. Turquoise was actually discontinued many years ago and only pretty recently brought back and thank goodness it was it's a fantastic color because it has only recently reappeared in the lego portfolio the part selection is still pretty limited so i gotta get a bit creative here i bought a number of these clip pieces to use as warped roots and i think they work pretty well i'm just putting some of these on top of one by one round plates to get a little height variation We'll blend this into the regular nether waste terrain, and this is starting to look pretty nice. I, I love the contrast between the turquoise and the dark red, it's fantastic. For warped fungus, I'm gonna be using a gunmetal gray stem, and then for the warped vines, I'm using one by one rounded bricks with teeth pieces. I think that looks pretty awesome. I'll have to order some more of those if I want to make any more, but I like it as a proof of concept. Now, I promised this thing was going to be tall, and I don't intend to disappoint. The nether is a very vertical dimension by nature, and I think we got a taste of that with the nether waste module, but I want to take that to the next level with this one. Like I said, it is my intention to make this taller than anything else I've made in this Minecraft series yet. And with the ice spikes from last episode, that might be a bit challenging. Of course, like always, I've tiled off the underside as it will be easier than ever to see underneath these bricks. I'm glad I ordered more turquoise bricks because all of this height means there's a lot of empty red space that I'd like to break up with some more of these vines. Making them taller really helps to add some visual interest to this. Another tall thing I can add is an enderman because these guys, of course, are all over the place here. 
This area has come together very nicely. We got almost everything you'd expect in this biome, but we're still missing some of the trees, if you will. So I wanna make sure there's plenty of room for those up above. Ideally, I would like to add three of varying sizes. So I wanna make sure we have enough platform space to build those on. Making a large cliff like this also carries over some consistency from the previous module. Great news is there's lots of room for vegetation and hopefully some mobs and of course the trees up here. I'm so glad LEGO brought back turquoise. It seems to be here to stay and it's such a great addition to the LEGO color palette. I'm gonna leave room for yet another cliff on top of this and also room for our first tree as you can see by the 2x2 two two yellow section. For the tree itself, it has a very purple hue to it, so I want to try to capture that dark purple feel as best I can. I feel like the regular purple color that LEGO has is far too bright, so instead I'm going to be using a mixture of transparent purple 1x1 round plates and dark brown bricks to achieve that effect, and I think this actually works really well. This is one of my favorite textures I've developed for the game. Much like what I did with the magma blocks, this is gonna be a very random texture all the way from the top to the bottom. I think it just looks more interesting that way. The fungal part of the tree is going to be much simpler. It's just going to be pure turquoise, and because of the limited selection of parts in this color, I won't be able to smooth out the underside. But I don't think it's that big of a deal, as it does provide some interesting texture when you're looking underneath. We got room for one tree, but I do think we need to make another cliff to fit in the other two. This one is going to be kind of fun because it's going to start extending over and above the previous nether module. The terrain in this dimension is absolutely insane, and I love the freedom that it gives me when building it out. As the build gets taller and taller, I think it becomes ever more important to, of course, tile off the underside. This has been a staple of this series since day one, and I'm not about to stop now. I'll detail this overhang in a very similar manner in which I have done the rest of the biome so far, leaving plenty of room for warped roots, fungi, and some vines. I also want to leave room for two trees here, which I've marked out with the 2x2 two two dark brown bricks. I've got a lot of questions in the past about what are these TNT blocks that show up halfway through my builds, and basically all I'm using those for is for measuring. I have a lot of them on hand, as so many Minecraft sets come with them, and they are just extremely useful for making sure my measurements are all correct. Once the final bricklink order came, I was able to make two more of these fungi trees. I love the variety that you can get out of these trees. No one large fungal tree looks like the next in game, so I was able to bring a lot of variety into the builds here too. Along with all those turquoise basic bricks, I also got 80 some one by one turquoise clips for the warped roots. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all those in. And much like I did on the base of this module, I'm going to fill in some of that empty space with the warped vines. There's only a few more details to add now. One of them are shroom lights, which will add a lovely pop of color. I'll add two on the highest trees here. They're just made using a combination of white, orange, trans orange, and trans yellow bricks. And we'll also put a player here. I'm using the one that appeared in the Nether Bastion set from earlier this year. With the addition of that player, the module in my eyes is currently done. And as it is right now, it is the tallest. Though I think I don't care for these antenna out of the tallest tree. I've instead removed them and made them support that tree, because if you remember my mangrove tree, which is also quite top heavy, it falls over all the time. Hopefully this will prevent that. I figure I should show you what the lava looks like in the dark, because I think it's pretty sweet. Don't get me wrong, these lights that I found on clearance five years ago at Barnes & Noble are finicky. You can see them flicker all over the place as I attempt to turn them on. But hey, the effect is quite epic. I need to incorporate some more lighting into some of my overworld modules as well. I think it adds so much value to a display piece like this. But yeah, there we go. I finally made a second nether module. And I know you were probably worried when you saw that 8x8 base, but I feel like this one probably has more bricks than the original module. I love how this one turned out. I've been really excited to make this one for quite some time. I started buying parts for it months ago. 
and this has always been on my list. And I'm so glad so many people suggested it too, because it shows me that you guys have wanted something like this. I'll definitely be returning to the nether in the future. At some point, I would love to do all the nether biomes. We'll see how that goes. In the next episode, I'll be tackling another underground biome for the overworld display. This time, I'll be doing the dripstone caves. In addition to the dripstone caves, there'll actually be a mineshaft in this module as well. If you want to watch that episode as early as today, all you need to do is hit the join button down below and become a channel member for early access. Seriously, a huge thank you to everyone again for tuning in. This series remains an incredible joy for me to build, and I'm looking forward to doing many more modules in the future. Have yourself a fantastic life, and I'll see you next time.